So what I thought I'd do today is just start off by sort of showing you on these human brain models how the brain is made up of two halves that are basically mirror images of one another. It's a, it's a neuroscience class, so I mean, I'm a neuroscientist, yeah, I'm housed in the psychology department, but neuroscience as a field really bridges biology and psychology, so it's sort of a middle ground. And it's called the chiasm because if you were to take off the pituitary and, and some of the associated tissue, it looks like an X, okay? So to think about the sheep brains now, we can look at animal brains, because, particularly mammalian brains, because they're virtually not identical, but they're incredibly similar to ours in both structure and function. And in fact, most of what we know about the actual workings of the brain or the workings of neurons as neuroscientists come from studying other animals. So here's what I want you to do. Over here on this table, grab your tray, come up to the sink, and I'll give you a brain, okay? You're gonna get, you're gonna get a whole brain, you'll have two hemispheres. Um, just take that back to your seat, wait till I get a brain for everyone, and then we'll start the dissection, okay? I've used Carolina stuff exclusively. They're a local company, they've supported us all along. The preserve that they use is non-toxic, which is really nice. I mean, I grew up using formaldehyde and formalin preserve stuff, which is really nasty. It's toxic and it's, it's just, it's awful stuff to work with. It does weird things to the tissue. I think it drives home to them to get them to have a different way of understanding the anatomy. Um, and also the point that mammalian brains are remarkably similar and there's a shared and common evolutionary history there. And I think when they can actually see that in the tissue, it kind of brings it all home for them a little bit more. All right, so everybody's got a brain. Good? You see those? Those are the olfactory bulbs. Okay. Well, for those of you that have your brains turned upside down on their plastic stands, if you look at the human brain, there are two white um, <coughs> things that are protruding under the frontal lobe. You see those? Yeah. Those are human olfactory bulbs. Okay, well, who's got the bigger olfactory bulbs? Humans sheep. or sheep? sheep? Sheep. What's up with that? What sense are we talking about? Smell. Smell, smell okay. Oh, so okay. why would sheep have proportionally larger olfactory bulbs compared to humans? They use their sense of smell more than humans do. Um, for example, when you go home this weekend, it's not like you're going up to your siblings and be like, oh, hey, sister, how you doing, right? That's not going to happen, right? But sheep do that, okay? They mark their territory. So these animals use their olfactory abilities as a way to explore new objects in their world. Now, as humans, when you encounter a new object, what's the first thing that you do? Look at it. You look at it, right? Because we're primarily visual in the way in which we deal with um, new objects in our environment. Here's what I would say to you. Try to, because you have a limited amount of tissue, cut with a purpose in that don't just start randomly hacking it up, okay? Think about something you might be interested in seeing and try to cut through that. Any cuts that you make, try to use a light sawing motion so you try to get the cut nice and clear. And if you see something that's funky, I can come and try to identify it for you. Most of them think it's really interesting, you know. Again, some of them talk about, ooh, how disgusting it was. Some of them talk about, ooh, I thought it was disgusting, but it was really quite interesting. And a lot of them thought it was so neat to be able to handle, you know, some nervous tissue of an animal. And, and again, like I said earlier, sort of just see that anatomy in real life as opposed to just looking at a diagram in the book or something like that.